يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون This is the month where forgiveness comes to you from every angle. Not getting forgiveness from Allah in this month means you worked hard not to get the forgiveness from Allah. Every day you get golden moments where your dua is accepted. Every day you get mountains of deeds only Allah calculates it for you. Every day you fast your 70 seasons, 70 years away from hell, if not more. 70 if you finish Ramadan properly 70 times 30 you got 2100 years away from hell Allah gives multiple folds of reward to get you to the high ranks of Jannah so if you don't get forgiven by Allah you sure know how to dodge but you're dodging forgiveness of the ghafoor you're avoiding rahmah and mercy pouring at you from every angle rahmah and forgiveness you desperately need for blessings in this life and more import importantly for entry to Jannah. Control yourself, discipline yourself, restrain yourself. That is what Ramadan is all about. You restrain yourself, you control yourself, subhanallah. So for one whole month, I stayed away from that which was halal. For the other 11 months, I can easily stay away from that which was haram. Fasting is a training for the body and soul, a renewal of life, encouraging the spirit of sharing and giving. We fast during the day, we pray during the night, we read, we recite, we memorize, we implement the book of Allah. We exhort ourselves in obeying Him, conquering our lower selves by emphasizing to ourselves the importance of pleasing Him. We realize the importance of worship and the relative unimportance of this dunya. Understanding the meaning of the gates of paradise are open, the gates of hellfire are locked, and the devils are chained. Why do we do this? For one reason. Hoping for Allah's reward and fearing His punishment. Ramadan is at our doorsteps. It is the month of forgiveness. It is extraordinary in its significance, in its importance, its excellence, its high station. Wallahi, if you had sin as much as a foam, as the foam on the sea, and you sincerely go back to Allah Ta'ala, all your sins will be forgiven. Man sama Ramadan, iman and wahtisaban, ghafira lahu ma taqaddam min dambi. Whoever fasts the month of Ramadan with, with, with firm belief and hoping for a reward, all oh, his previous sins shall be forgiven. There is one who does taraweeh and qiyam and he can't wait for the Imam to do salam. And there's another one who does it and he's excited as he's standing before Allah and one who just does it just to do it. Some are superficial and traditional in their worship and others enjoy when their stomach is rumbling, gurgling and growling because his mind escapes his body and realizing how beautiful this fast is. He realizes how much he loves the one he's leaving all these desires for. His stomach is growling but his heart is laughing at how much further and further this is taking him from Jahannam and how further and further is getting him to Firdaus. He stands on his feet the long hours, excited, enthusiastic, eager, because his mind is with the reward of where the stand is going to land him. A palace, that the ceiling of it is the Arsh of Allah, neighboring Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Jannah. Let's have some discipline during Ramadan and focus on finishing that Quran at least did you guys know we say we're Salafi everybody here says they're following the Sunnah right am I correct I'm in the right place 
Okay, I'm gonna tell you something. Most of the Sahaba, most of the Sahaba, most of the Sahaba finished reading the Quran every seven days. Most of the Sahaba, most of the Sahaba, most of the Sahaba finished reading the Quran every seven days. Did you guys understand that? So we say we're going to follow the Sunnah, and this is not in Ramadan. This is normally, this was their normal practice. In Ramadan, it was increased. So if we say we're going to follow the Sunnah, let's follow the Sunnah in this, because we say we're following Quran and Sunnah. But we jump past that a lot of times, and we totally ignore that. Let's try our level best to read the Quran as much as we really can during Ramadan let make let's make that our joint mission because that's part and parcel of Ramadan reading the Quran and see how many times you can finish it and see the effect that it has by you finishing it over and over again and reciting it to your child and having your child read it to you and these things like that these are practical things that will make landmark changes in your life so again fasting is supposed to have a type of haba a type of attitude you're not supposed to be playing and joking around Allah's messenger taught us without Ramadan man yu'min billahi wal yawm al akhir fal yaqul al khair aw la yasmut whoever believes in Allah on the last day let him say that which is good or let him shut up that's the language so we see this is not in Ramadan so it should be more done in Ramadan we shouldn't be doing a whole bunch of chatty chatty talking about all types of things you know it's like a catapult you know how a catapult works you have this catapult and you have a stone you put the stone at, in, in one part of it and you pull it back how much do you pull it back a little bit it that uh, stone will actually shoot out of there very very far so to me Ramadan is like a catapult you're actually pulling back and you throw when you throw it helps you for the other 11 months by the time the stone lands you are already in another month of Ramadan you follow what I'm saying this is spirituality it's one way of looking at it there are so many other ways so it is so vigorous it requires energy such that you've used it so powerfully in this month that the rest of the 11 months you are just sailing you are flying you are cruising cruising and when by the time it comes to land you are already you have the stone again and you pull it back and you are again moving for the other 11 months so the discipline that is achieved through the month of Ramadan is unique and amazing let me mention to you one thing there are certain things that are haram to eat do you agree like for example you have pork you have alcohol you have so many other things that which is not slaughtered correctly and whatever else so many things are prohibited you're not allowed now look for one whole month from dawn to dusk we stay away from that which is halal water is halal I cannot have it in Ramadan during that time from dawn to dusk why discipline myself for the sake of Allah Allah said don't have it so if I managed to stay away from that which was halal for one whole month then surely after that I can appreciate that which is halal by eating it and stay away from haram at least at least Allah gave you fasting so you can protect yourself what does that mean let's let's try to understand what that means human beings us we have certain training you have to go through training if you want to get good at something especially physical training like if somebody is they want to become a soldier or they want to become a police officer and they have to go through certain kinds of training and their body learns to adapt like at, at the beginning it's hard and then it gets easier and easier and easier for them right and this idea of training putting yourself in difficulty it helps you in not well by the way when you're in training things are easy when you're in the training program things are easy like for example when they train firemen they set up a fire to put it out but they control the fire it's not like a real fire in a building it's controlled so it's easier they make you jump down a building but it's easier it's not like the real thing they go easy on you and then they, when you get good enough then they put you in the real life situation you understand that right now the same thing happens with fasting 
fasting, you're constantly feeling something, aren't you? Constantly feeling thirst. You're constantly feeling hunger. There is not a minute that goes by that you're not feeling it. Your, your throat is fighting with you. Your lungs are fighting with you. Your, your throat is yelling at you and saying, give me water, give me water, give me water. Whether you like it or not, there's a war going on inside you when you're fasting. There's a war, physical war going on inside you. Your throat is against you. Your stomach is against you. Your body is getting weaker and begging you, please disobey Allah, please disobey Allah. And you stay the entire day fasting, fighting your body and you say, no, my heart is submitted to Allah and therefore I don't care if my entire body wants something, I will not give it to it. You train your heart to control your body. That's what you do when you fast. Why is that important? Because when the fasting is over, you have to continue to train your, now your heart is ready to control your body. So you're not just going to eat what you want. You're not just going to go where you want. You're not just going to look at what you want. Because all of those things your body wants. But who has gotten stronger when you fast? The body got weaker and who got stronger? The heart got stronger. And where does taqwa rest? Inna dhalika min taqwa al the, the heart is the place of taqwa. When you give your body the, the weakness, and you give your heart the strength, you train yourself to stop yourself from other things. So my, my dear young brother, the young guys that are here, if you're fasting, staying at home and watching movies, you're not fasting. You're not fasting. Because you're still, your heart is still giving in to your, uh, the, the wrong temptations. The entire exercise of fasting is you constantly remember, yeah, just like I'm fighting my stomach, just like I'm fighting my throat, I gotta fight my eyes. I gotta fight my, I gotta fight my mouth. I gotta fight my tongue. I gotta fight my, my desires. I gotta fight my hormones. I have a fight with everything now. The, the thing we see is the drinking and the, 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 you know, the, the eating. But everything else. Fasting is your training for real life. And by the way, I told you when training goes on, when training goes on, then it's easier. Controlled fire, controlled situations. What does Allah do? Does Allah make fasting in Ramadan easier? Does He cage up shaitan? Does He put the shaitan away? He does, doesn't He? He's going easy on you. So your heart can get a chance to train and get better without being in the battlefield. The second Ramadan is over, Eid Mubarak, guess what? Shaitan is out. And the war begins. And all of that training will now come in handy. But if you didn't train yourself properly, eh, Look, uh, I mean, just to help the younger guys here, this is for the younger guys especially. If a guy wants to join the army, he has to go through physical training. So they make the guy jump over a wall or climb a wall and go on the other side. So two guys join the military. One of them jumps over the wall, the other one goes around the wall. They both got to the other side. You have to do it 10 times. One guy jumps over it 10 times, the other guy walks over it 10 times. Right? Now when they're on the battlefield and they have to go over a wall, Who's gonna go and who's gonna fail? You understand? They both can say, I did it, I made it to the finish line. But that's what you wanted, to reach the finish line, I did it. You will fast and your brother will fast, but your fasting will not be the same. It won't be the same. There's the guy who applied himself and actually trained himself and the guy who didn't train himself, they're not gonna get the same results. He said alayhi salatu was salam, من صام رمضان إيمانا واحتسابا غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه. That whoever fasts the days of Ramadan through his iman, his belief in Allah subhanahu wa taala, and his ihtisab, when he wants the reward, the ajr from Allah, his past sins will be forgiven. That's the first opportunity. The same hadith. The Prophet ﷺ said, but instead of man sama, whoever fasts, he said man qama, whoever prays, meaning the night prayer, during the month of Ramadan, also the two same conditions, through his iman, and he's hoping to get the reward, is his ihtisab, his past sins will be forgiven. And yet another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever prays Laylatul Qadr, through his iman and his ihtisab, that his past sins will be forgiven.
three opportunities. The Muslims are excited because they know during this month there's a night that's better than 1,000 months. Whoever is praying and worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that night, 1,000 months of worship, who have in the scale of his good deeds on the day of judgment. The Muslims are excited because they know that this is the month of, of the Quran. Shahr Ramadan. The month of Ramadan where the Quran was sent down. They follow in the footsteps of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who used to recite more of the Quran during Ramadan. And the footsteps of the scholars of Islam who would stop teaching during the month of Ramadan just to focus on reciting the Quran. My dear brothers in Islam, as we focus on the preparation for this month, we focus on about we're about to enter into the month of Ramadan, we need to remind ourselves. We need to remind ourselves that there's no guarantee that we're actually going to enter into Ramadan this year. We could go out today or tomorrow and not enter into Ramadan. But, inshallah ta'ala, through our intention, we intend to benefit from this Ramadan. We're preparing, we're excited about this Ramadan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we were to die before Ramadan, He'll give us the reward for what we intended in charge. And we need to remind ourselves as well that this Ramadan, if we're blessed to enter into Ramadan and to fast it all, inshallah, that it could be our last Ramadan. How many people do you know or that you've heard about who are now six feet deep under the dirt? They didn't, they're with us last Ramadan, but they're not with us this month, this year. You need to focus on that, remind yourself, take full advantage of this Ramadan. Preparation, preparation, preparation is the key. Prepare yourself. Think about it mentally. What do you want to do? Write it down. Put out your goals. Say this month, this Ramadan, I'm going to do this and this. I'm going to read this much of the Quran. I'm going to do this many good deeds. I'm going to go for Umrah. I'm going to visit sick people. Whatever type of good deeds you want to do, I'm going to give more sadaqah. Every time I see a worker on the street, I'm going to give him five reals. I'm going to give sadaqah to send it to Syria, to anywhere else to the people in need. I'm going to give this much money of sadaqah during the month. I'm going to pray tarawih every night. I'm going to wake up early and, and read more Quran during the night. Whatever your plans are, write it down. Have goals. And be careful of the trap of shaitan that so many Muslims follow into. Because Ramadan, it's 30 days or 29 days. So it's just like a marathon. You don't sprint when you run a marathon. If you want to finish the marathon, you have to have a steady pace all the way through. Too many Muslims, what they do when it comes time for Ramadan, they fly into the month so excited. Do so many good deeds. But unfortunately, they die down at the end, towards the middle. But don't forget that, that night, that night that is better than 1,000 months, it's in the last 10 days. So make sure you start off on a steady pace and you finish on a steady pace. Prepare yourself for what's going to come, inshallah ta'ala, and Allah knows best. Ramadan, the beloved, is a month that we gain taqwa, as the Almighty Lord says in Surah Al-Baqarah. That fasting is prescribed upon you as to those before you for one reason the main reason the wisdom behind fasting in order that you learn taqwa so as you can see this verse teaches us something extremely important which is the main reason that or main thing that we can gain from fasting what is this self-restraint taqwa god consciousness God fearing and basically it means to fulfill the commandments of Allah Ta'ala and to abstain from his prohibitions. This is taqwa. Abdul Malik ibn Asma'i, an early predecessor, was in Mecca when Ramadan came. So he decided to escape the heat of Mecca and go to Ta'if, a bit more cooler. Ramadan's coming 50 degrees, it gets pretty hectic. So he said, I'll put my luggage on and I'll travel to 
35, probably 25 degrees, 20 degrees. Yeah, easy, leniency. As he was traveling, he met an Arabi, a desert nomad. Yeah, desert nomads. Huh? So he met a desert nomad. And he asked him, where are you going? Because I'm going to Mecca. He goes, but are you not afraid of the Meccan heat? Ramadan's about to appear. Why would you want to go from coolness to heatness? He goes, Ya Abdul Malik. Wallahi. It is from the heat of hellfire that I'm main away from. Not the heat of this dunya. And how can you do that? By fulfilling your obligations of Allah. Subhanallah, he knows that in Mecca is an elite reward, an immense reward. He will prefer to be in the immense reward in Mecca. Huh? And not in Ta'if because there's more reward in the month of Ramadan. So Subhanallah, he would prefer to be in Mecca for the reward, saying that I prefer or I am running away from the heat of the fire and not the heat of this dunya. Ramadan is a therapy for one's Iman because as time goes by, your Iman wears out. When you wash your clothes and wear them, Time and time again, you wear them out. And that's the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Abdullah ibn Umar al Tabarani. Inna al Imana la yakhluku fi jawfi ahadikum kama yakhluku thawb fasal Allah an yujadid al Imana fi kulubikum. Faith wears out of the heart like any one of your clothes wears out. So ask Allah to renew your faith in your heart. You ask Allah and you act upon it too. Ramadan dusts your heart off, it repatches your clothes. It revives your Iman and it ignites it for a takeoff. You start off this Imanic therapy by directing your inclination, inflating your desires, shackling your inclination like the shaitan was shackled. If you leave eating and drinking and your wife, which is otherwise halal on normal days, this is a boot camp to train you never to do what's haram throughout the entire year. Fasting on the day of resurrection went to seed for you. As the hadith mentions, the fasting will say, Ya Allah, I prevented him from food and from desire, so accept my intercession for him. Well, the Quran will say, Ya Allah, I prevented him from sleeping at night, so accept my intercession for him. And then the Almighty Lord will accept their intercession. But we have to look at our intention very, very carefully. And that intention is meant only for Allah Ta'ala. Unfortunately, we see many who fast for other than the Almighty Lord. Wallahi, the beloved, it is a terrible possibility that all your actions, whether it is the fast or the prayer or anything else, can be rendered null if your intention is not sound. If you are not intending this fast or any act of worship solely to the one that created you, you are wasting your time and you are leading yourself to destruction. So make sure you monitor, make sure you put your intention under surveillance every day, every single day. Talk to yourself, ask Allah Ta'ala to give you ikhlas. You intend in the heart that the fast is meant solely for worshipping Allah Ta'ala and this should be before the dawn of each day according to an opinion and some said that you can say it or intend the first night of Ramadan for the whole of the 30 days inshallah they're both acceptable and strong so you do it before the dawn of that day as Ibn Khuzaymah and Imam Ahmad mentions from Hafsa that whoever does not make his niyyah before Fajr, who have no fast on that day. Another narration mentions that when you are fasting, do not act indecently or argue. And if anyone abuses you or wants to fight with you, what do you say? I am fasting, I am fasting. Ramadan, a blessing many in their graves desperately wish 
to have an opportunity at. A blessing many onlookers will regret they did not take advantage of.